die earlier. Now, would that make sense? I mean, does God uh, punish people and they burn uh, a long time just depending upon when they die? I mean, it would, be, would it be fair for someone to die a thousand years ago and then burn a thousand years longer than the person who died today just because he happened to be unfortunate enough to live a thousand years ago and die at that time? I mean, would that make any sense? It doesn't make any sense at all. And none of those things are true. None of those things are true. People that died a thousand years, they don't go down and they're not burning. Somebody that died yesterday that was lost, he doesn't go down and he's not burning. <laughs> Revelation 20 tells us that at the end of the thousand years, that's when they come up out of the grave. That's when they're judged. And then that's when they go into the fire. And if you look back at the text, it tells us also in chapter 20, verse 13 at the end of the verse that how are they judged? Right, they're judged according to their works. Now that implies that they're being judged fairly by God, right? If somebody's works have been really bad like Hitler, you know, he's got more coming to him. If somebody hasn't been that bad but they haven't accepted Jesus or they're lost, then they have less coming to them. But God's judgment of them at the end is going to be based upon their works, it's going to be just, and it's going to be fair. Doesn't that make sense? And it would also make sense that after his just judgment of their lives according to what they've actually done, that when he finally punishes them in verse 14 and 15, when they finally do go into the lake of fire, it would make sense that their punishment would be just according to what they've done. You see what I mean? God is just. His punishment is just, and depending upon what people have done, you know, that's the way they'll be punished. And it all makes perfect sense. At the end of the thousand years, that's when they come up. That's when they stand before God. And based upon what they've done, then they're judged by those things, and then they get punished according to their works. And it would also make sense that once that punishment has been meted out, then the punishment would be over. Wouldn't that make sense? And we'll get to that as we get a little bit farther. So, let me just summarize what we've learned from the book, from this book, straight from the Bible so far. We've learned that according to Jesus Christ, the fire takes place at the end of the world. We've learned according to Peter, 2 Peter 3, 7, the fire takes place at the end of the world. We've learned according to Revelation 20, that the lost are resurrected at the end of the thousand years, at the very end, then they're judged according to their works, and then they get punished in the fire based upon what they've done. And so far, Matthew 13, 2 Peter 3, and Revelation 20, they all fit together, don't they? They all fit and they all make sense. All right, now in that light, let's turn to Luke 16 and let's look at the one passage in the whole Bible that seems to say something totally different. The rich man and Lazarus. Luke chapter 16. This is it. And I'm going to try to build my case here, and it shouldn't be too difficult to accept in the light of what we've just gone through, that what we're reading here is actually what the Bible calls a parable. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. How does it start? Jesus said there was a, what does he say? A certain rich man, right? The King James says that, a certain rich man. Now, if you read the book of Luke carefully, uh, you'll discover that Jesus Christ told many parables in Luke and many times he starts out by saying there was a certain rich man. A certain man did this, a certain man did that, and sometimes it's a certain rich man. Now just back up a couple of pages and then we'll come back to this. Go to chapter 12, Luke 12, verse 16. And here's just one example. 12, 16 says, and he spake a what? He spoke a parable. A what? A parable, right. A parable is a story. And he spoke this to them, and he said, the ground of a certain what? Rich man brought forth plentifully. Right, so in, uh, in this verse, Jesus is telling a parable about a certain rich man. And so it would make sense when you just turn the page back to chapter 16, verse 19. 16, 19, that when Jesus starts out by saying there was a certain rich man, that once again, he's telling a parable. Because this is the way he starts parables in the book of Luke. All right, let's go back to chapter 16. And let's just go through it quick. Luke 16, 19, there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. 
and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. Verse 22, it came to pass that the beggar died, the poor man died, and he was carried by the angels, and where did he go? Into Abraham's bosom. Now is this symbolic or is this literal? He was carried by the angels into the bosom of Abraham. If this was literal, uh, Abraham would have to have a, a really big bosom to take this man and have him deposited in his chest. Obviously, this is a symbolic language that Jesus is using. No question about it. So there he is. He's in the bosom of Abraham. The, the poor man is. And then it goes on and says at the end of verse 22 that the rich man, he also died and he was buried. And then it says, and, and where was he? In hell. Now, guess what Greek word is used here? How many of your Bibles say hell? How many of your Bibles say Hades? Okay, quite a few of yours. Right. And what does Hades really mean? The grave, right. And so Jesus is using the word Hades here, uh, obviously symbolically, because as you keep reading, this man is tormented. Verse 28 says, in hell he lifted up his eyes. So here's the rich man, he's down there, and he lifts up his eyes. Now that shows he has eyes. He's not a disembodied soul that's left his body. He is described as having, having eyes. And he looks up, he's in torments, and he sees Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and he said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. He has a tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Now, first of all, uh, can people that are in hell and those that are in heaven, can they look and see each other and talk to each other? And does that sound realistic? No, this is, a, this is a parable. This is a story. And again, the rich man, he's in the body. He has eyes, he has a tongue, and he looks up and he sees Abraham and he says, please send Lazarus to take his finger, dip it in water, and touch my tongue because I'm tormented in this fire. Now let me ask you, if you were actually literally burning in fire, how much comfort would a little bit of water on the tip of uh, somebody's finger touching your tongue, how much would that comfort you? I mean, if you were really burning, burning in fire, you'd say, uh, Father Abraham, send Lazarus with a, a, a bucket and just, you know, put it all over my whole body. It wouldn't, it just doesn't make sense uh, to just put a little bit of water. And besides that, if you're actually literally burning in fire, can you carry on a normal conversation with somebody? I mean, if you're in your kitchen and if you take your little pinky and put it on a hot stove or, you know, some electric burner and just touch your finger there just for a second and then try to talk, you won't get very far. You can't just put your finger on there and say, you know, this is really hot and I, I need to take my finger off here. You, you, you're not going to do that because you can't talk when you're in flames. The, the, this is full of symbolism. And they go back and forth and they, they talk to each other. And finally, um, when you go down, maybe I'll just read the rest of it. Uh, verse, verse 25, Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and Lazarus received his evil things, but now he is comforted, he's up there, and you are tormented. And besides all this, behold, between us there is a great gulf fixed, so that they who would pass from here to you cannot, neither can they pass from us to you. Verse 27, And then the rich man said, I pray therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they should come to this place of torment. And Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And that's significant. They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. When you read Moses and the prophets in the Old Testament, nowhere does it say that a lost soul goes down to a place of burning at the moment of death. Verse 30, He said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went to him from the dead, they would repent. And he said to him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead.